If in previous launches we felt concerned about SpaceX's Starship schedule due to FAA obstacles, for the sixth flight, the timeline's been fully set without any exceptions. This is a promising signal for the future. We can expect the approval process to be smoother and faster, shortening the waiting time between Starship launches. So, why are we so confident in saying this? And how rapidly are Ship 31 and Booster 13 going ahead of the upcoming launch schedule? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before diving into the changes at FAA, let's first talk about the driving force behind this ship, and that is SpaceX. Flight 6 is set to launch in under a week, and all activities at Starbase are moving faster than ever. We are seeing some incredible progress. While Ship 31's been at the launch site for a while, on the early morning of November 14th, Booster 13 got rolled out to the launch site by SpaceX teams. And after resting there for a few hours, by 6.30 a.m., Booster 13 was swiftly attached to the chopsticks. Only about 90 minutes later, Super Heavy was firmly secured on the launch mount. This rapid movement in action highlights the readiness of both the rocket prototypes and the corresponding infrastructure. Without disappointing us on the evening of November 14th, Starship's second stage got stacked onto Super Heavy. The stacking process was remarkably quick and smooth, taking under two hours, and we gotta say, we have never seen stacking happen this fast before. In previous launches, the stacking process took around two to two and a half hours, and for this new launch, that time has been significantly cut, albeit not drastically, but still a move in the right direction. Naturally, with the company and Elon's ambition to launch a Starship a day in the future, incremental improvements like this one are essential. So after the full stack assembly, the SpaceX team did not rest. They then removed the scaffolding from the launch deck while conducting inspections and making final preparations for a comprehensive test known as the wet dress rehearsal that's scheduled to roll on November 17th. The road closure notice clearly reflects this. In this wet dress rehearsal, both stages of the vehicle, Starship and the Super Heavy Booster, get loaded with cryogenic propellant. The test rigorously validates the fueling system, ground support equipment, and launch procedures, stopping just short of actually igniting the engines. Following the tanking test, engineers will carry out a destacking operation to separate Starship from Super Heavy using the tower's massive mechanical arms. This separation is essential to install the FTS flight termination system, which is a crucial safety mechanism that's designed to terminate the flight if the vehicle deviates from its intended trajectory, ensuring safety for the general public. The FTS must meet stringent specifications and undergo thorough testing before getting certified. Excitement is building at Starbase as the launch date for Flight 6 is fast approaching. Each step in this process underscores the meticulous and methodical nature of spacecraft preparation, with every procedure carefully built on the previous one. If all goes according to plan, the six Starship flight launches on the afternoon. That's pretty cool to anticipate, yeah? Now, of course, SpaceX will not need to wait for that FAA license just a few days before liftoff like they did before. But why worry about the FAA when at this point we can confidently say that future Starship launches are going to happen so quickly that we won't even have time to get used to it? Why is that? It's likely due to the influence of SpaceX and their CEO, Elon Musk, creating invisible pressure that pushed the FAA to expedite their licensing regulations for spaceflight. As we know, the peak tension between SpaceX and other aerospace agencies regarding the FAA's cumbersome regulations occurred in the lead-up to Flight 5's test launch. But according to Elon and SpaceX's plans, Starship Flight 5 was already as early as August. However, it wasn't until late September that SpaceX got an estimated launch licensing date of late November from the FAA. The company attributed the delay to unnecessary environmental reviews concerning systems that SpaceX had already demonstrated to be safe. From this, it's clear that the FAA's environmental investigations and regulations are a growing concern, especially given the increasing frequency of space launches. The FAA defended its rules at the time, claiming the delays were SpaceX's fault due to modifications to missions or vehicles. However, even space enthusiasts like us know that technology evolves almost on the daily. The FAA has the authority to influence these processes and determine the pace. If that approach isn't working, then change is necessary. And thankfully, we have seen some progress. On November 14th, the FAA started reviewing the rules governing the licensing of commercial space launches and re-entries. These regulations, which were introduced back in 2020, were intended to streamline processes to accommodate a rapidly growing market, but have since been criticized by the industry for creating unnecessary delays. 
Although the FAA's regulations don't typically apply to launches conducted by the U.S. Space Force or other federal agencies like NASA and the National Recon Office, a healthy and diverse U.S. commercial rocket market plays an important role in cutting government costs. The FAA is seeking to update its licensing rule to foster more clarity, flexibility, efficiency, and innovation, said FAA Associate Minister for Commercial Space Transportation Kelvin Coleman in the agency statement today. Making timely licensing determinations without compromising public safety is top priority. The FAA's announcement noted that it approved a record 148 licensed commercial space ops in FY24, an increase of more than 30 percent over last year. The FAA forecasts that number may be more than doubled by FY 2028 and is launching an aerospace rules-making committee to update the FAA's Part 450 launch and re-entry licensing rule, it added. Launch and re-entry licensing regs under Part 450 primarily focus on ensuring safety for the public, like requiring companies to have measures in place in case of a launch pad explosion. However, they also include requirements for aspects like environmental protection. Some commercial companies and industry advocates in Congress have previously voiced strong complaints about these regulations. During a hearing last year at the Senate Commerce Committee's Space Subcommittee, they accused the rules of being confusing and causing licensing delays and hindering innovation and undermining the U.S. industry's market position. Bill Gerstenmeier of SpaceX warned that the entire regulatory system is at risk of collapse because the difficulties of getting these new licenses under the new regulations. The way it is being implemented today has caused severe licensing delays and confusion is jeopardizing our long-held leadership position, said Dave Cavassa, president of Commercial Space Flight Federation, an industry group whose members include several launch companies. He cited specific concerns like the long pre-application process with the FAA where companies had, he said, getting stuck in endless back-and-forth processes with the agency to determine how they can meet the performance-based requirements of Part 450 with limited guidance. The process is taking years, he argued. SpaceX in particular has been a vocal critic, especially following the FAA's September announcement that it was proposing to fine SpaceX $633,000 for allegedly failing to follow its license requirements during two launches in 2023. That action that followed an earlier fine and delays in SpaceX obtaining a launch license for testing the Starship, which Space Force is eyeing as a possible through space carrier, has led to an ongoing feud between the agency and the company, with Elon threatening a lawsuit in a post on a social media site, X. In response to these criticisms, the FAA has previously planned to address the issue through a series of documents known as advisory circulars, which outline ways for licensed applicants to demonstrate compliance with these regulations. However, in practice, the FAA has yet to release many of the planned circulars. License processing under the new Part 450 process is moving at a snail's pace, said Representative Brian Babin, chairman of the subcommittee. However, now President-elect Donald Trump has now tapped Elon to co-chair the new Department of Government Efficiency, alongside former Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, to slash the bureaucratic red tape. We dare say the FAA won't be able to delay this revision any longer, given the Trump admin's push. It was widely expected that the FAA would begin the process of updating its licensing regulations, and it's something that the Trump admin is likely to accelerate, given the apparent influence of Elon in whatever advisory or former role he may play in the new administration. We should expect to see forward-leaning changes that make it faster for companies to get launch licenses said Todd Harrison, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. According to the FAA announcement, a review committee will be formed bringing together experts from the commercial space industry and academia. This committee will focus on nine key areas, including flight safety analysis, system safety, and compliance. A report outlining recommended changes is expected to happen by late summer next year, which will help guide future rulemaking to formalize these reforms, according to the FAA. The agency also noted it is actively inviting stakeholders to participate with an initial meeting happening the first week of December. Hopefully, the FAA's regulations will eventually be more aligned with a rapid pace of development and dramatic changes in the spaceflight industry. Only then can individuals and organizations in the field advance towards new milestones, contributing to the growth of the industry and the strength of the U.S. One of the most critical players in this field is SpaceX, the current leader in the U.S. space industry. SpaceX needs a clear and open path to achieve even greater accomplishments, setting a benchmark for other companies in the sector to rise together, ensuring that the United States maintains its dominant position on the world stage. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.